Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 3, understanding establishes. Where there is no understanding, you would always find chaos. And the more you talk to each other, the more you understand each other. Understanding helps you read between the lines. When it comes to understanding, let me just point a few things out. Number one, we must understand the differences between men and women and how they communicate. I think if we understand this, it will help us. Generally, there are a few exceptions, but generally, women are more dialogue oriented. We like to talk and talk and talk. We're very chatty. Men, they are more action. They just, they don't like, you know, talking too much. You ask them, how are you? Just fine. And they are good to go. But when you ask a woman, she will tell you she's fine, tell you her husband is fine, her children are fine, and she will give you additional information that you may have not even, you don't even want to know. <laughs> But that is the nature of most women, generally. So when you find that your husband is giving one word answers, it's not necessarily that he has a problem with you or he's angry with you. That's just his nature. But to the husband now, it doesn't mean you should stay that way. Because you have to adjust yourself accordingly to the nature of your wife. Your wife is the kind of person that would like to have more information. Don't just say fine. Because, you know, most times when the wife, when you say fine, or you say, you say she will say, so exactly how was the day? What did you do? You say, I did this and this and this. So what happened? How did you feel? And, he, and he, the man will start feeling, this woman, stop disturbing me. <laughs> stop disturbing me. What's the problem? But that's, that's her nature. She just wants to get the details. She just wants to get the details. I remember just a few days ago, I was talking to Pastor David. He was in my office and he was telling me something and I kept going on and on and on and on. And after a while, he would just start there and he was just looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't answering me again. <laughs> he stopped answering me. So I said, okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. <laughs> but that's our nature. We just like to find out things. So as a man, you have to adjust yourself a bit. It's not enough to say, well, I, I don't really like to talk. That's not enough. To ensure that there's a connection between yourself and your spouse and your wife, you have to talk. To ensure there's a connection between yourself and your wife, you have to talk. Because one thing that, uh, another point I would like, which I'm going to my uh, next point now, I would like you to know is that in, when you pay attention to your wife and talk to her, she feels more connected to you. At least I do. She feels more connected to you. When she can have a proper conversation with you, she feels like you are paying attention to her. So connection matters to her. And she gets that connection when you are conversing with her. And a man, for a man, respect is everything. No matter how nice your words may be, if the tone is disrespectful, the man would disconnect from you. Every, you know, men, all men are not the same, but a general need of man is respect. And most importantly, from his wife. If everybody disrespects him in the world, at least his wife. <laughs> his wife must show him the ultimate respect and he will be okay. Am I lying? So, <laughs> respect is everything. So when you're talking to your husband as a woman, you don't talk to him like he's your child. You don't. Many times that's how, you know, we, women, we have the nature of doing that. You, I, because I, I think so, I heard somebody say that, you know, the, the man is the additional child because you have to do everything for him. <laughs> you have to do everything for him. So sometimes women forget. The same way she's, the same way she's saying, um, John, pick that up. She will say, Sarah, pick that up. Then she will tell her husband, you to pick it up. <laughs> she, sometimes she doesn't know where to draw the line. And you have to know where to draw the line. No matter how nice your words may be, if you don't give him respect, if he doesn't feel it in your tone, he will disconnect with you. He will disconnect from you, sorry. And for a woman, connection is everything. So both parties now have to make adjustments so that it is balanced. Praise the Lord. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Praise the Lord. 
Now, number three thing I want us to understand is that men and women deal with their emotions differently. Men and women deal with their emotions differently. As women, we are emotionally out there. We don't know how to hide it. That's why when you put so many women in a group, <laughs> be sure that there are going to be some fireworks. <laughs> it's just something that has to happen. Because we women, don't, we don't know how to really, you know, some of us are not, don't have the grace to really just deal with our emotions properly. We are so, if we feel a certain way, we say it. I'm not talking to her. I'm not talking to him. I'm not talking to her. That's how we are. <laughs> we, we wear our hearts on our sleeves. Men don't. It's hard for, for men to be emotional. So when they become emotional, that's why, you know, when, sometimes when you find a husband and a wife, the man lets down his guard. He becomes so free emotionally, lets, her know, lets the wife know everything. If she goes out and tells anybody, it's like a stab in his chest. Because he's, he, it's hard for him to be emotional. So the t when he takes the time to actually let everything out, and even maybe comes to the point of crying in front of his wife. And then his wife says, ah, my husband was crying the other day. <laughs> <laughs> my husband was actually crying to me the other day. It, 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 it's very painful. It pains him. That's a, a wound that you need prayer to heal. It's so painful. For a woman, that's not a big deal. So men and women differ emotionally. And we have to, although men are masculine, they're actually very tender. You know, they like to show that they are strong. No offense to the men. But <laughs> they actually have very tender hearts. They are very tender. So that's why sometimes it just takes a long time for them to, to connect emotionally. But when you understand that, it, it, helps you, it helps you not become frustrated. It helps you do what is required of you to ensure that the, the um, connection process doesn't take so long. Praise the Lord. And one final thing I want us to understand under this um, understanding aspect is that we must study our spouses. I always like to use the phrase, be a student of your spouse a lot. And I, I mean it, be a student of your spouse. It takes away a lot of frustrations and assumptions. Don't lump your husband or wife in with every man or every woman. There are some things, like we said, respect, honor for a man, all those things that men generally like and appreciate, but he's not the exact same as somebody else. So you have to study him and know exactly how he is made up. And the same for your wife. Your husband is not like you. Your wife is not like you. You may be similar in some instances, but you are not the same 100%. So study them. Study them continuously. Find out what makes them feel loved. Find out what makes them connect. Find out, as you are observing them, you see, you see it, you will see it. If you pay attention, you will see it, and then capitalize on that. Praise the Lord. It's so important. Pastor Shinabade was saying something about how our, we change over time. So as you are studying, pay attention to the changes. Because if you are using... Oh, you liked this before. Obviously, and they have, it's 10 years later. Obviously, you have not paid attention to the fact that something has changed about them. You are still focusing on what they liked 10 years before. So be a student of your spouse. Observe them. As we grow, we change. Our interests, our likes, whatever you know, we are interested in differs, changes with time. They change with time. So pay attention to that. And in... in Finding out what makes them feel love. I want to just touch on their love language. <clears throat> you have to understand what your spouse's love language is. Everybody is not the same. And is that the language you are speaking to them? Is it the language they understand? You can't say because generally most women like flowers. So my own wife, too, must like flowers. <coughs> Her own love language may be completely different. Let me list out the love languages for you. It was one of the books that we, we recommended. Words of affirmation, 
This is someone who likes to hear you say the nicest things to them. Just tell me I'm beautiful, tell me I'm doing well, tell me you know, I'm the best thing that happens in sliced bread, tell me everything, just tell me that I'm the best. Words of affirmation, that is all somebody needs from you. Maybe your wife just needs to hear that constantly and you are buying gifts, buying gifts, and you're wondering why she is not satisfied. Because it's not her love language. It's not what, that's not what moves her. That's not what she's interested in. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number two, acts of service. Acts of service. You may be telling your wife how beautiful she is, how lovely she is, how much you love her, and all she wants you to do is help her around the house. Stop all this, uh, I love you, I love you. Go and, <laughs> go and help me in the kitchen. Go and help me with the children. All this one you're saying. <laughs> She, she's, she's, her, the acts of service is what matters to her, and you're standing around saying, oh, you know I love you, I love you. She's just getting angrier. <laughs> study her. What, study her. What does she like? Receiving gifts. Receiving gifts is another one. Somebody's love language may be to receive gifts. You can't be using something else, and, one, and you're wondering why it is not um, working. Number four, quality time. Somebody just wants to spend time with you. That's all your husband wants to do. Just spend quality time with you. You can't use every other thing. You can't be affirming him morning till night and you are not spending any time with him. He wouldn't be a satisfied husband. And finally, number five is physical touch. Physical touch. Your spouse's love language may be just you touching them, hugging them, cuddling with them. They just want to feel you touching them. That's all they want. That's all that will make them happy. How hard is that? That's all he wants. That's all she wants. Study, it's, it's, it will make life easier. It will make life so easier because, you know, most times people always hear, while, like I've said already, I'm, I'm all for learning what everybody else does that makes their marriage work. But, you know, I, I always say I don't copy and paste. Don't just copy and paste. Because somebody's wife is different from your own wife. Somebody's husband is different from your own husband. You may do ex the exact same thing that they are doing and it backlashes on you. And you're wondering why. Because they are not the same. You learn all these things, but don't just take it and just put it in your own home. Because every family dynamic is different. The makeup of every home is different. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so observe them, listen to them, study them, and then begin to fill their love tank. That is when you would, you would have a satisfied spouse. If it's something that doesn't come naturally to you, maybe words of affirmation, you don't know how to, you know, say nice words to your spouse for whatever reason. Practice it. You can only get better by practicing. So work on it. Practice it continuously. But don't say, I don't know, it's not, uh, it's not something that comes naturally to me, so you don't do it. Don't do that. You would have an unsatisfied spouse. And therefore, that means that the marriage it, is not um, glorious or enviable if you are not doing something to make your own spouse happy. Praise the Lord. So all these things help with understanding. When you have a full understanding of your spouse, how they are, how they react, how they connect, all that, it helps you understand them better. It helps you not get frustrated. And it helps you, um, you know, not jump to conclusions concerning them. They are very helpful. Praise the Lord. Make room for differences. <clears throat> Celebrate your differences and just learn how to enhance them. Every one of us have weaknesses and strengths. So if your husband has a weakness, don't hammer on it. Don't say, why can't he just be organized like me? No, you are there for a reason. So find a way to complement and help him enhance that weakness and complement it at the same time. Instead of hammering on it, accept the differences that come in marriage. Praise the Lord.